Hello there, Chuck here again, and another update on our personal track vehicle build. This time we're going to talk about the sprockets, an integral part of the machine. Now, I've mentioned all along these things are copied of a Honda powered wheelbarrow. I actually have a picture. This is a little puppy right here. A uh, Honda powered wheelbarrow sprocket. It's an HP 250. If you look closely, there's a uh, three holes in there for a hub that, of course, goes specifically to that particular unit. But I ordered one of these online, and they're yeah over a hundred dollars. And I asked if I could actually use it and send it back for my original vehicle, which I did. And so they took it back with a restocking fee. But I took this. Um, to a machine shop and they copied out this right here. Well, actually, I'll show you down here. This is what I got from my machine shop. It's a it's a 60-pitch uh, sprocket. This one, folks, is made out of 7 8 inch steel. This one here, when I had it done, because of the width of my original Honda-powered uh, sprocket, it was one inch thick, so I had them cut at one inch thick. Well, then I come to find out, as you can see, these teeth are tapered to the inside. They're tapered at the top. So I went ahead and cut this down anyway to taper it to match uh, the tracks a little bit better. Well, this one I found out when the machine shop said they couldn't get any uh, one inch steel drops, they, but they had seven eighths inch. I figured it'd be okay anyway because I, like I said, I took a grinder to this actually a cutting wheel and trimmed it down a little bit anyway this literally matches the inside of the track I don't know if I can show you while I'm trying to do this stuff or not it actually fits in there perfect it's almost like seven eighths inches but I'll probably still trim that down a little bit anyway <clears throat> so I had to make that I had to make the center here and this is what I do this is a half of a Excuse me. Oh, there's a half of a four inch shaft coupler, one inch slotted shaft coupler. And the way I did this, I don't know if I can do this one handed or not, but I'll, I'll see what we can do here. I actually used the axle for a kind of a template, put the hub on it. I guess that's kind of hard to do that. Real nice tight fit. And then I simply, actually, what I did there at that point. I went ahead and lined it up real good and I just tack welded it. Just tacked one side, tacked another, and then I'd spin it around to make sure it was straight. Then I did the same thing with the, I don't know, the sprocket, I guess you'd call it. Fits on here. Did the same thing, tack welded it. And uh, as you can see, I got some little tacks on it there on both sides. I'm going to have a real welder do this, not me this time, because obviously this doesn't look too pretty pretty bad but again the other one was all a test right remember that could be rewelded anyway so anyway the bottom line is I ended up with it it's nice and straight and there's nothing wrong with that now another thing I have to mention if you're gonna go this way the shaft coupler itself it was a four inch shaft coupler the original one I had had two Allen bolts one there I had four of them actually, one on one side, and I could cut it right in the middle, and I had an Allen bolt there on both sides to lock it down on the axle. Well, this new one that I got, of course, everything changes. This one only has, surprise, one. Well, I actually had two of them. And I, for the life of me, could not find one that had four, so I'm down to one. And, of course, it doesn't get a lot of sideways pressure on it, but I was a little concerned about that, what to keep it from moving. So I came up with this idea. They're all over, easy to find. Simple one-inch shaft collars, locking shaft collars. These are the non-keyed one. I don't know why that won't work. Put one on either side of it, lock it down, and there's still room. Let's see, where's that little booger? I still have the, the one Allen key locker there thingy. So there we go. That's uh, 
That's how I did the sprockets. Let me throw something else out at you. That's the good news. Bad news, I want to show you something over here. When I took the vehicle down, I had to take this sprocket in because I don't have a Honda powered wheelbarrow sprocket. I just took this to the machine shop and they actually, you know, put it in their CNC or plasma cutter and they cut it out. But in taking that off, I found something that I'm not happy about and everybody needs to be aware. I did not even know this had happened. This is one axle from the uh, Peerless 100 series that I've been talking about and saying there's so many great things about. Well, it was still running. I have no idea when this happened, but the axle, the aluminum housing, actually broke off of the the body of this thing. Amazing. It's uh, not good. Let me say a couple things here. One, these axles are only rated for 10 horse engines. I have an idea that happened a long time ago because uh, I haven't had that motor on there that long. It was still turning and running. It's amazing. The gears were still working. Because of the pillow block bearings, it was nice and tight in there, so it was still working. But when I took it apart, I was like, wow, this is a little bit loose in here. The axle was a little bit loose, and then I come to that. Now, one of the reasons, it may be the horsepower, it may be the way I was running it, or it may be because, if you look real close here, when I put this axle together, I ground down a lot of the support here, the webbing for the aluminum housing because this sprocket is exactly two inches uh, by the way this sprocket had to be drilled out to match this anyway in order to get this thing to fit on there i had to grind that down and i heard of people doing that on some other track vehicles the other track vehicle originally i had you had to do that so anyway what i probably should have done is just grind that out farther leave that webbing alone and i probably wouldn't have that problem can't guarantee it though makes me wonder about the whole thing again <clears throat> I think with a six and a half horse and the correct sprocket you wouldn't have to grind that webbing down so it'd be a lot stronger <clears throat> let me go to this that sprocket let me take it over here doing this totally unscripted today I'm tired it's been a long day but I'm glad to get on it <clears throat> I only found one place on the internet that I could find these sprockets. And I'm gonna do old Dave Staten or Staten, however you pronounce his name, I'm gonna do him a big favor. I contacted him to see if he was interested in sponsoring poor old Chuck here. And uh, he was not interested because he said this stuff never works for him. <clears throat> so I could get all cop and attitude and say, well, I ain't gonna help you, but I'm not like that. My book says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so I like to be helped. So what I decided I'd do is still show you, if you want sprockets to match the differential Peerless 100 series, this is about the only place you could find them. S-T-A-T-O-N-Inc.com. Dave is his name. And they have every kind of configuration and, uh, you know, two, you know, 3541, whatever. They got all sorts. And they're already drilled to the four holes. And the other cool thing is that I, I made sure I, with it, that they're already pre-cut. I think he does all his own CNC machining to two and an eighth inch instead of two inch. This is two inch. His will be two and an eighth. Thus, you won't have to cut down that webbing, grind that webbing down on that differential. But fair warning, this has got me thinking about the whole different thing right here. Probably would have been fine with a stock six and a half horse, and it might have been fine anyway without grinding down the webbing on it. But that's, uh, that's not a good thing. And you know me, total disclosure, I want to make sure that we, you know, tell you the good and the bad and the ugly. So I'm going to continue building it. I'm going to continue doing it. Of course, I have my new differential. I'll get a sprocket that fits it and not have to trim down that webbing. It's quite a, quite a bit bigger. So we'll see. The other thing, let me say, when we do this, it's very imperative that that axle is completely straight and solid. 
that's why what I did, I didn't try to build the frame first and then set the axle in it. I actually used the axle for the, you know, for the plane so it would be level and match it to that. Because the axle is pretty straight and short, it doesn't wobble or anything like that. There's no wobble on it there. So it's imperative to have this thing nice and straight um, and uh, build your frame to match that. Another thing I did since I talked last time, I got double thinking about you know the whole support of the frame and so forth and what I did I went back out and took these back off and drilled them one one uh, drill bit bigger there's they're a three-eighths inch hole exactly if you drill it exactly you'll match the pillow block bearings but I made them both a little wider because I if you can follow me here I wanted it to center itself I want to be able to center the whole axle the pillow block bearing is center everything to the axle not not even try to twist it or, or out of joint or anything like that. I want that thing to be totally straight and level. So I figured that what I could do is just open those holes up a little bit. And as I weld the brackets, the braces in across, so forth, and make sure I stop every time and make sure that this axle is still turning nice and, and free before I really crank the pillow block bearings down on the frame and finish that up. Okay. Um, again, these sprockets... They're a 60 pitch. If you're going to build something like that, people can build them different ways. I wanted to be able to build to have the belt, the, excuse me, the track come down lower and have another set of bogies. Some people make them just to match the whole uh, diameter the, uh, that you want your track to run. I wanted uh, a little bit differently so, so I can have those bogies down at the bottom. That's why you'll see mine the way I did it. All right, I guess I hope that all makes sense. Like I said, it's been a long day and uh, felt good to get out here in the shop and be working on this. Hope I can help you out a little bit. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for the subscribers and the supporters and things. I'm already thinking, what can I do next? Um, just a little bit concerned about that axle like that, and especially when I'm using a 13 horse on there without a governor. Something to think about. All right. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. I hope you're having a good day, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.